Perched atop the western shores of Ireland sits the city of Galway. Nicknamed the city of tribes due to the 14 merchant families or tribes that ruled the city for nearly 600 years, today Galway has become Ireland's fastest growing city. Galway is also known as Ireland's cultural heart due to its vibrant city life and numerous festivals throughout the year. The most famous of which is perhaps the Galway Races, a famous horse race held every summer. But today, we are here for a different animal. For one weekend every September, Galway celebrates its famed Galway Oyster with a celebration that combines tradition and sophistication. This is the Galway Oyster Festival from Galway, Ireland. My name is Guad Venegas. I'm just a regular guy who likes to travel and have a good time. But when I travel, I like to hang out with a couple million of my closest friends eat their food, drink their drink, and party like a native. I'm on a mission to see the world one festival at a time and experience firsthand what people are like when they drop their guard and start to party. This is World Party. Saturday is the official start of the Galway Oyster Festival, which means that this weekend I'm going to be eating lots of oysters and drinking a lot of beer. But to work up an appetite, right now I'm going to go learn how to play a traditional Irish sport called hurling. So let's get started. Hurling is one of Ireland's most popular sports. I managed to catch a few club games here at Pierce Stadium in Galway. Hurling could best be described as a mix of field hockey, lacrosse, and a little bit of rugby thrown in for some good measure. It's a tough sport and dangerous too. The X's and O's break down like this. The field is about 140 yards long with goals that consist of soccer nets with uprights above it. These are obviously defended by a goalkeeper. There are three fullbacks, three halfbacks, two midfielders, three half forwards, three forwards giving them each 14 hurlers. The main piece of equipment is the hurley which is the stick that hurlers use. Note the flattened curve end which is used to both balance the ball and strike it down the field. As you can see here a hurler cannot pick up the ball with his hand, rather he must flip the ball up with the hurley and then he must strike the ball down the field or pass it as they can only hold the ball in their hand for three steps. The ball is actually called a silotar. It consists of two pieces of leather wrapped around a rubber core, very similar to an American baseball, but with more pronounced stitching. The ball can also reach speeds of nearly 90 miles per hour and can travel the length of the field with one good strike. Tackling and body checking are not allowed, but hitting shoulder to shoulder is legal. If the ball goes out of bounds, the play is then restarted by striking the ball from the ground on the sidelines. Scoring can happen one of two ways. The ball can be batted through the uprights for one point or it can be batted past the goalkeeper into the net for three points. That seems to be the gist of the game and it's quite fun to watch. Now I was supposed to get a lesson after the second game but after a series of increasingly worse injuries which culminated with a player having to go to the hospital with a broken shin, both teams ended up taking off early to support the players at the local hospital. So it looks like I won't be getting a lesson, but when we come back, I will get a lesson in Oyster Opening that hopefully won't end with someone going to the hospital. And now, the World Party Guide to Making the Perfect Irish Coffee is told by Martine, the proprietor of Martine's Restaurant and Wine Bar, the finest eatery in all of Ireland. All right, it's very easy to make an Irish coffee. What it is, is a spoon and a half of sugar like that, and the same amount of instant coffee. You add hot water to it, instant coffee, and you stir to totally dissolve the coffee and the sugar, right? When you're stirring like this, you must make sure that you stop the pearl of um, coffee, because when you add the cream, it will follow the flow, and it will sink straight to the bottom. You add a shot of whiskey, which is a count of 10, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? And then you add the cream. Now the cream that you add is pouring cream, and what you do is you just whisk it, which I did a little earlier, very small, and when it's like that, you run it off a spoon so that it doesn't sink to the bottom. 
nice and slow. And the whole point is that I'm going to stop there now. Why not my head? The, the hot coffee and the cold cream that when you're tasting it, that you have the hot and cold coming together, which is really, really magic. Coffee beans, if they want it for decoration, there you are. And that's how simple it is to make an Irish coffee. Okay, so I'm here with my friend Enda, and I'm gonna learn how to shuck an oyster. That's the proper word, right? Shuck, shuck, is, the, shuck is the word, yep. I, I would have said how to open an oyster. No, well, this is how we do it here, okay? So here we have the oyster, all right? Okay. And our very, very sharp oyster knife, okay? You gotta get a really good oyster knife. It has to have a very, very, very sharp pointy tip. So this is this is an oyster knife? This is knife an oyster here. knife. You have to put an awful lot of pressure on this, on the tip, right? Okay. And you press right into the corner. See, there's always a corner, right? Yeah. And you literally press in as hard as you can go. In, twist, and that's it. See, see it open? Okay. So you twist the knife like that, and then the same rules apply. Uh, okay, slide, slide along. Okay, and, and then you, you just loosen it up. You loosen it up right here, flip it over, and ready to go. Oh, you have to flip it over. You have to flip it over, yeah. Just to make sure, because what happens is sometimes there's some membrane left, and then when you sh throw it back, it sticks and it falls everywhere. So make sure you get it completely off the membrane. Okay, I mean, okay. he made it look real easy. I'll, I'll see how. No, there you go. Three on. As it as it be open. Uh, okay. So. So hold it, hold it like this. Like a, yeah. Uh, no. Okay. Now, down. Put some pressure on that. Yeah. Yes. Like. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah, and like this. Make sure you have plenty of cloth. Okay. But always turn it down at an angle. Kind of like that, so yeah. it's not pushing into my hand. Yeah, yeah that's kind of that. Now twist the knife, that's it, now slide. So like the twisting is the what twisting actually opens it. The twisting just separates it, yeah. You gotta get the knife in, and the oyster is still alive. And then when you twist it, it's, it you're that's in. That's what actually does it. Yeah. You, you, that's nice yeah. and gentle, that part. You don't want to destroy it. Oh. Now. And it's flipped. And that's it, and some lemon. That's it. So to review, opening an oyster isn't that difficult. You just need a sharp knife, a little bit of protection, then just insert the knife into the opening and twist to open the shell. Make sure to sever the membrane that connects the oyster to its shell. When we come back, it is time for the Oyster Opening World Championship and the big party in the marquee. Today marks the official opening of the festival. At noon, a parade will commence through the town and the mayor of Galway will start the festival by opening and downing the first oyster of the season. The idea of having an international oyster opening championship was originally conceived in September of 1953 by the owner of the Great Southern Hotel, Brian Collins. When looking at his nearly empty hotel, he wondered how he could expand the tour season beyond the summer. Realizing that oyster season had just begun, he thought that this time next year, why not celebrate the opening of the oyster season with a festival? And in September of 1954, the first Galway Oyster Festival was held. From its modest beginnings, the Galway International Oyster Festival has grown to an annual celebration that sees tens of thousands of tourists from all over the world come to Galway to celebrate the oyster. So I'm with John Rabbit. John, you are the uh, chairman. How did you become the chairman? Um, well, it's like a poison chalice. You just dumped in the job. <laughs> But it's, no, I, I enjoy doing it. Uh, they've asked me, everyone can be kick their turn. This is my turn. Okay. So we just, uh, we built up experience over the years, how to run the test. We tweak it every year after we've had a few problems or whatever. We try and sort them out the following year. How important are oysters in Galway culture? 
Well, they're quite important really uh, because the festival in fact has started to extend the tourist season and to promote the local native oyster. I'm thinking you like oysters yourself? I do. I love oysters, yes. Okay. So what's it taste like for somebody who's not here who wants to imagine what one of these oysters tastes like, mm. the Ireland oyster? Uh, very hard to describe it. I suppose you do get the salty sea taste already. Uh, it's succulent, sweet. Um, and it goes very well with Guinness and brown bread. <laughs> Guinness. So what's unique about the festival itself that uh, would attract tourists to come well, here and not any other oyster festival? It's quirky. It's, uh, it's a quirky product. I mean, and the World Oyster Open Championship, although it's taken very seriously by the competitors, it's actually a fun event as well. Um, this is the, the oyster opening event. Imagine celebrating a little mollusk, you know, pray out loud. It's a quirky thing to do, but it's... It's fun, and it's, yeah. uh, it's about fun as well. It's also about meeting the girls and the fun, sir. You never know. And you, you, you have beautiful women in Galway. Yeah. You might be the woman of your dreams here as well. It's part of the festival is all about. That's, that's the hook line right there. That's yeah. the first people to come to Galway. Do you ever find pearls inside the oysters? Yes, occasionally we get a pearl in an oyster. The problem with the pearls though is that they need a little more time. Our oysters are about three years old when we get them. Okay. Uh, if the oysters are going on, they can get a lot bigger and develop more. If you get a bit of grit inside it, you know, maybe that's the third form. So the ones we get will be small and maybe swallowed before people realize it. <laughs> okay. Just before the mayor opens the oyster season by officially having the first oyster, a parade procession makes its way through the streets of Galway to the Great Southern Hotel where the festivities begin. As the band plays on, the 17 official competitors of the World Oyster Opening Championship assemble bearing the flags of their home country. This year sees competitors from the US, Canada, the UK, Ireland, France, Germany, Czech Republic, Norway, Poland, Estonia, Finland, Sweden, Singapore, Belgium, Denmark, Switzerland, and Wales. This year's Oyster Pearl, the winner of the pageant associated with the festival, addresses the crowd, so welcomes sir, them, and offers the mayor the first the oyster of the season. To our mayor. Uh, this, we, I think we should count it down because he was out late last night. So we give him a three, two, one. Obviously, uh, well practiced. Thank you very much indeed. Councillor Porrick Keneally, our Mayor of Galway. So as the parade procession proceeds from Ayer Square to the Marquee, let's take this time to go over some of the rules. The rules of the Oyster Opening World Championships. Rule number one, each competitor must open 30 oysters. Rule number two, each competitor may only use a knife, a cloth or protective glove and the cutting board supplied by the Oyster Committee, nothing else. Rule number three, each competitor must indicate that they are finished by ringing a bell that is supplied by the committee. The winner is determined by who has the lowest time after penalties are assessed. Competitors will be penalized for an oyster not severed from its shell, an oyster with blood on it, an oyster with shell or grit on its flesh, an oyster that is not turned properly, and any oysters that are missing out of the 30. Back over at the marquee, overlooking Galway Bay, the World Oyster Opening World Championships are about to get underway. This year's favorite is Ireland's own Michael Moran. Representing the U.S. is Bill Chopper Young. Hands in the air. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, the rock. Oh, 
three for Pele, four for the Angel, four for the Striker, and four for Schumacher. Five for the Striker, seven for the Angel, six for Pele. The Oyster Opening World Championships are only three heats and go quite fast. Now it's all up to the esteemed judges to evaluate and inspect every oyster on every tray. Any identifying markers are removed from the trays and judged blindly. These guys have no idea which tray was done by which competitor. This competition is, is about the skill of opening oysters and it's uh, internationally acclaimed and it, 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 it's fun for the judges. First said this year the standard was very good. It's excellent, so very high standard, very super, high standard. super standard, you know, and really, you know, when you've got to judge on, on such, if you ask me now, if you ask any of these guys here, who won? We don't know. We don't know because there's so many different aspects to it. And the first thing that we must look at is presentation. And it's how the tray would be presented uh, in terms of the visual presentation of the tray. At that stage, we're not going into any technical points about the oyster, just what it looks like. Um, and this whole oyster opening is a trade-off between speed and skill. Then the next one is we've got to examine carefully and Jerry will show you how he examines them with the, with, with the magnifying glass, which is where there's any grit in the oyster. The next one then we check, Tom, you check for the, the oyster muscle, whether it's properly severed from the shell, so that you, may, you should be able to pick up an oyster, you should be able to pick up an oyster and tilt it so it slides back down your throat. So you shouldn't have to bite it, fork it that one isn't there now so that's a penalty and then when we hand our sheets over there we have a guinness kindly provided us with a supply of guinness there we have guinness and generally will eat the evidence and the decision <laughs> is fine that's it that's it okay okay so now it feels like i'm in galway it's like 20 degrees colder at least it feels like it is and it's the middle of the day so after the judges showed us how they judge the oyster opening they're kind enough to give us 30 oysters for free. So these are the ones I'll be eating. They say one person should be able to eat about 12 of these. So I'm gonna go inside, throw some salt and lime on these and see how many I can eat. Back inside the tent, the afternoon continues as oysters are down, the booze is flowing, and the band is playing. I need to try to find a table to set up shop and start on my oysters and Guinness. With the first one down, they're really not that bad at all. It's lightly salty with the taste of the sea, but the flesh is meaty and firm, not slimy like some of the oysters I've had in North America. A little bit of lemon on this, and they're really quite good. So as I'm enjoying my oysters and beer, up on the stage they are getting ready to announce the winner as the judging is already over, and it turns out to be an upset. Chopper from the US pulled it off. When we come back, I'm taking you guys on the world famous Oyster Trail. So far there was an upset in the Oyster Opening World Championship that saw Chopper, the US delegate, take home first prize. I had my first taste of the Galway Oyster and washed it down with some Guinness. Tonight there is a Gala Society party for the Oyster Festival. But instead of attending that, I'm gonna go absorb some of the Galway flavor and party with the locals and other tourists in the city by taking on the Oyster Trail. The Oyster Trail historically was a pub crawl of about 30 pubs throughout Galway. Each one would serve free oysters during the festival. The goal was to see how many pubs you could have an oyster and a pint of Guinness at. In recent years though, with the escalating price of oysters, not as many pubs offer the free oysters. Some don't even serve them at all. However, there is still a handful that do keep the tradition alive and that's all I need to motivate me to take on the trail. So far at the Marquee, I've had seven oysters and two pints of Guinness. Let's get started.
Okay, I have seven bars done, and I'm gonna try to get, I don't know, maybe about three more, and then see, hey, hey, hold on. Hold on a second. Okay, I think I've had about enough oysters for a lifetime. I opened them, I ate them, now I had enough of them. So I'll probably go to one more bar, have another beer, then I'll call it quits. But I'll see you guys next time on the next World Party. See ya.